Yo what's good people it's Jay Cactus and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to sample in FL Studio. This is another one by request, a lot of people have been asking me to show them how to sample things like choirs and drill beats. But before we get into it I want to give a massive shout out to everyone that grabbed my new drum kit, the Pricket Volume 3. That just dropped on Tuesday and I've had nothing but good feedback from it so I appreciate you all man honestly. And I've got something special dropping for everyone that's grabbed the kit so I'll announce more information on that soon. But yo let's get into the video. Alright, so when you wanted to chop up samples, obviously the first thing that you need to do is find a sample. So I always use YouTube for samples. You can just type in things like dark orchestral, choir samples, or choir sample playlist. People make these playlists for themselves, but then they share them with everyone, so you don't have to do all the digging. You can do if you want, but yo, know, sometimes it's the longest part. Sometimes I spend hours just trying to find one sample. But for today, I'm just working with this piano sample that I found. It's got a choir in it as well, so that's why I've chosen this one. So there's this part, but then the one that I wanted to chop up was somewhere around here. Yeah, around about here. That bit. I just want that loop there. So you could do it from the playlist, but I'm just going to show you the process that I usually do. So I'm going to double click and then right click in here, then click edit in audio editor. And I want to go to that loop, it's somewhere around here. So around about here. All I'm doing there is clicking and dragging. So if I click and drag this side, I can highlight more of it. So I just want to get a rough loop for now. And then I'm going to turn on loop mode. Make sure this arrow is unchecked as well. So it doesn't follow it as it's playing. Then you want to make sure that this is set to snap to zero crossing. Because what that's going to do is if I zoom in to this point here, it's going to snap to what's called a node, which is when these two lines meet up. See this green faint line in the middle? You want a point where the two lines meet up and that's like perfectly in the middle. So that's just going to avoid any clicks or pops. But just because it's snapped there, it doesn't mean that I've got a perfect loop. I might need to bring it back or forward. So I'm just going to turn on loop mode and then play it. If you're a beginner and you don't really know how much you should chop from the sample, then usually I'd say chop between like four and eight bars. Sometimes you can chop a little less like this loop here. It's only two bars. I'll show you what I mean. So most music has the rhythm of 4-4, four, four, which means there's four beats per every bar. If I just kind of tap along to this, one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. You know what I'm saying? So that's a two bar loop. So you want to try and get a perfect loop. You can chop it after, but you're just going to save yourself some time if you try and get a perfect loop from Edison. So I usually just play it whilst the loop settings on and I might zoom in and just increase it or decrease it a tiny bit at each end until it sounds like a perfect loop. So there's a little click. might be a little bit better. Try bring this forward. So there's still a little click in there, but I'm going to press Control and C and then I could open a new Edison or I could just press Control and A then delete and then Control and V to paste it back in. And now I'm going to come up here to the wrench tool, click D click in all regions and then D click out. And that should fade out the beginning and end just at a quick rate. So there's no clicks. So there's still a tiny click that I can hear, which Fruity Slicer might sort out, but I'm going to try and just fade out the end here. So I'm just highlighting the end, clicking fade out, and I can try the beginning as well if it hasn't worked. There we go. That's just fixed it. So now I've got this loop, there's no clicks or pops. I can use this tool to drag it to the playlist. I've got the tempo set to 144, but you can see that the sample isn't that tempo. So what I can do here is stretch it out. I'm gonna double click in it, go to stretch mode. That means that when I stretch it out, it's not gonna change the pitch. Make sure that stretch is ticked here. And then I'm gonna hold alt and click so it moves freely and it's not snapping anywhere to five. So it's technically a four bar loop. It just depends how you count it. So if you put the metronome on, it's basically in double time. Right, so now that I've stretched it, I'm going to render this out. I'm just going to right click, consolidate this track, time selection, and I'm going to leave this on cut remainder. Make sure this is on WAV and then just click start. Now this top one is the new one, so you can get rid of the bottom one. And the reason I do that is because if I dragged the original one into Fruity Slicer, it would drag it in unstretched. So when it does the chop, it would be off. So now this is a clean rendered file that's ready to chop. So now I'm going to open Fruity Slicer and you want to drag the sample in. So I'm going to double click, drag it up here. And I hate when it does that. 
If it does that and it's not showing up, you just need to click on here and then click all again. I don't know why it does that. If anyone knows, then let me know. So just drag it over Fruity Slicer. And now when you come into Fruity Slicer, you can see that it's 16 beats, which is right. That's what we chopped and it's at 144. So now it's up to you how you want to chop it. Just to keep it easy, I like to set it to beat and it'll just chop one for every beat. So if you've got a MIDI keyboard, you can use the MIDI keyboard to play around with the chops, but if you don't, you can do it manually like this. So I'm just gonna hit Control and X to delete it, F7 to go to the piano roll. So it chopped it at every beat like we told it to. So if it was just playing normally, it would go up like this, but this is when you wanna get creative and try and play around with the chops. So you could bring one of them up. And then it's up to you to work out a chop that you like. So I'm thinking something like this. And if you're hearing them clicks, it's because it's chopped it. So all that you need to do is bring up the attack. So a real simple chop. And now I want to mix it a little. So I'm sending it to track one. Probably boost the volume a little bit from here. I'll start with the EQ just to clean it up. taking out some frequencies I don't like. I want to add some reverb as well. There's a bit of reverb in the sample, but I want to add a bit more. Maybe a real sort of delay as well. Got it set to ping pong mode. It's just widening it. And now coming back to the chop, there's a few things that you can do within Fruity Slicer. So one of them is the pitch shift. So I could maybe bring it up. So every 100 cents is a semitone. Time shift changes the BPM of the sample, but because we took care of all of that before, we don't have to do it in Fruity Slicer. That was when I rendered it out and stretched it out in the playlist. If I didn't do that and I brought it in, let's say for example, the BPM was like 100 BPM, you could adjust the time shift. And then if you look in the top left, you can see it's going from 144 and then to the BPM that you need. So if it was 100, you know, you drag it down until it says 100 to 144. All right, let's add some drums. Alright, let's start adding some perks in as well. Thinking a shaker, just act as a second hi hat. some reverb to this one. Yeah, I've just changed that pair to a guy. I'm 
just going to add a reverse in as well. Maybe the short one. I want to add these in. I like to just set it to one beat and then reset the pitch so it doesn't change. You know what? I'm thinking I don't really need this perk in. Sometimes I can get carried away with all the perks, but I think I might leave it at this. And I think I forgot to show you one more thing for sampling. So what you can actually do is reverse some of the samples. So all these chops that you've got here, for example, let's try that one. I could reverse that and this one. Let's just see how it sounds. So we didn't actually use this one, but it's just something else that you can try. All right, let's add a ground bass in as well. I'm hearing this harp. I just want to play this subtly. So maybe every eight bars or something. Actually, I've just switched that harp for some strings and this is sounding a bit better. So I think that's enough instruments and the main purpose of the video was to show you how to sample So I'm just gonna finish the beat off I'll mix it arrange it and then show you the outcome All right So I finished the beat and as you can see I've added quite a lot of effects which might be a little bit overboard But just for this track I wanted to create more atmosphere So in the intro all that I did was take the original sample that we rendered I just reversed it and then chopped it So it was this way before but because I reversed it I just like the way it sound and this little bit here It's just volume automation I just cut out a tiny bit just because I was hearing some kind of click after I swapped it around. So all the effects are mainly in the intro. I love using them to lay drops. Eight way pattern change a tiny bit here. Just more slides. Then there's a bit of a bridge after the hook. So the verses are quite short. It's pretty much the same as the intro, except it doesn't have isotope vinyl on. And then the rest of it repeats just like that. So there's three verses in total. And then for the outro, I just repeated the hook. So I hope you liked the video and I hope you're feeling the beat. I know this was more of a beginner's tutorial, but everyone's been asking for it and I wanted to make sure everyone knew how to sample. As you've seen, it's not that tricky. It all just comes down to finding the right samples in the first place. But yo, thanks again for watching. I've got many, many more videos dropping soon. So I'll see you next time.